Hello students. Um, I thought it might be helpful for you if I just went through a diploma exam um, the way I would do it. <laughs> that sounds um, incredibly <laughs> boring <laughs> for me and maybe for you, but maybe it's helpful for you. Um, I'm going to try this anyway. If it seems popular, I'll do it on another one. If not, then I guess I wasted a few hours. Anyway, okay, so this is the 2017 released items. Um, and let's let's go. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... There's the answers. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to just do this as I would do it, and I'll, I'll try to teach um, test-taking skills at the same time. Okay, so... There's my first question. I'm sitting down writing my stinking diploma exam. I don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. But you're stuck in that test. It's important for you. So let's do our best. Here's what I do. I just read that first. The statements above that apply to photosynthesis are numbered. I haven't even looked at this yet. I just want to, what's the question? Okay, so it looks to me like this is a straight knowledge question about photosynthesis, right? So um, I'm just going to like write down photosynthesis. So I know that 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus sunlight makes C6H12O6 glucose and 6 oxygens. If I need to put in states, I will, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay, and... Away I go. Um, the reactants are glucose and oxygen. Oh, so here's what I would do right now. Even though I know this, I'm going to just write down those are reactants, those are products, because this is a diploma. And what if I'm nervous and I just start making stupid mistakes? So I just, I just write that down. Okay, the reactants are glucose and oxygen. No, they're CO2 and H2O. So that is false. Not going to trick me on that one. The reaction absorbs energy from the surroundings. Yes, when energy is on that side, the reactant side, it's endothermic. So that is true. Uh, the reaction stores energy in chemical bonds. Uh, yeah, that's true. When, when these react, that sunlight gets stored inside the bonds of the molecule on the other side. So, yeah. The products, okay, products are CO2 and H2O. Nope. All right. So it looks to me like the answer is B, 2 and 3. Okay. Easy. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. What do we got? So first thing I do is I just look at this. The enthalpy change for the oxidation, that makes me think redox, of ethanol to ethanol. Ethanol. I always hated that word. I don't like the sound of it. It ends too weird. Al. And the overall equation is... Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll go up and look. I got oxidation in there, but honestly, when I read all this... I look at it, I see this, and I think, oh, this is a Hess's Law the long way question, right? There's Hess's Law the short way, where if I just go products minus reactants, I can figure out what the heat value is, but I know that this one's not in the data book, ethanol, and so I'm going to have to just figure this out the long way. Okay. Makes me not like the guy that wrote the question because he's taking up my time. I just want to leave my diploma exam and be done with high school. But anyway. Okay, so I need to build this equation. Okay. To build that, I need to first start with this one. I need two ethanols as reactants. And I look and I see one ethanol, ethanol as a reactant. So I need to double that one. So I'm going to write down what I'm going to do. I'm going to double equation one. So um, C2, 2C2H5OH plus 6O2s makes 4CO2s and 6 waters 
and then I gotta double my heat value, which means I'm gonna get on my calculator and It's going to come out to 2649. I could have done that in my head. 2649.6, and it's negative still. 2649.6 kilojoules. Okay. No, 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 no. Wrong. See, I can make a mistake, so it's okay for you to make a mistake. 2469. 2469.6 kilojoules. Okay. So I doubled equation one. All right, so that's done. Let's go to oxygen. Oxygen will take care of itself. Let's go to ethanol. C2H4O, I need two of them as products. I have one as a reactant. So look what I have to do. I have to double two and reverse, right? Okay, so I'm gonna reverse it. So I have to go to this one, um, and I also have to double it. So this is four CO2s plus four H2Os produces um, two ethanols plus, oh, I got a fraction here, okay. So my hat is go five divided by two, it's 2.5 times two of them, uh, because I gotta double it, yeah, equals five. Okay, so I'm gonna have five O twos. So five O twos, and now delta H equals, okay. I was a negative, but I flipped it, so I'm now a positive. And 1,078.4 times by two is 21. 56.8. All right, now I'm just going to clean this up. Get rid of that. Bet you wish you could do that quickly on the diploma, hey? This is a program called Notability. Works really good. By the way, now that I catch myself talking, I hate when I'm watching YouTube videos and I'm trying to find an answer on YouTube. And the guy that's on YouTube is just like, talk, 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 talk. <laughs> I just got to forward. <laughs> so I got to stop doing that. All right, so I'm just going to stop. Okay. Okay, so I can do this, right? I can see that I can cancel four CO2s, four CO2s, five O's will cancel out five, leaving me with one. Four waters cancels out six, leaving me with two. And then if I just look, I need... Two of those, got them. I need one of those, got it. Two ethanols, got it. Two waters, all right. So that means I should be able to go delta H equals and just add this up. And I get negative 312.8. I go look at my answer, B. Negative 312.8. Okay, done. Let's go to the next one. Ugh, looks like a long one. I don't want to read that. Okay, so... Change this back to red. Okay, so... I, Me, my brain, I look up there and I go, I don't want to look at you yet. So I just read this. The student's experimental value for the molar enthalpy of combustion of methanol. Expressed in scientific notation, of course. Kilojoules per mole, the values are... Okay. All right, so... Uh, I have now seen this is the most important part. And when I look up here, it looks like I've got a calorimeter. Molar enthalpy of combustion of methanol. Okay, the student burned methanol to heat up water. And all the energy transferred to the water. Okay, the initial, uh, they didn't give me the temperature. That's what the little, that's what these are for. They're going to make me figure that out. Okay, so when I do this, 
I first just kind of visualize in my head that, where can I do this? Uh, I'll just do it down here. I visualize in my head that I've got some little burner here filled with alcohol, fire coming out of there, and I got a beaker filled with water, and ethanol is giving heat to the water, so I've got heat lost equals heat gained. Heat lost by ethanol equals heat gained by water. And the ethanol is going through a combustion. So my formula is N delta HM um, because it's, uh, it's a chemical change. I tell my students this is the chemical change formula. The other side is just a temperature change, MC delta T for water. So this is ethanol, this is water. So I'm gonna just solve that, okay? Because they want me to find the molar enthalpy of combustion. In other words, they want me to find delta HM, molar enthalpy. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean up the screen here and we'll go with that. So I'll just move this, move this over here. Wouldn't that be nice on the diploma? This program is pretty good. It's called Notability, but I'm not going to talk about it. Okay. Um, so, okay, I need to isolate delta HM. I'm going to divide by N. Divide by N. Okay, so delta HM for ethanol equals MC delta T for water divided by N of ethanol all right okay let's go what's my mass of water so i got 0 0.100 kilograms of water times by 4.19 remember my little trick here kilojoules per kilogram degree celsius times by the temperature change oh yeah they're gonna make me look this up because i got nothing better to do okay so you got to read the bottom of the meniscus. So that's going to be 73.1. And this is going to be 20.9. I do my little subtraction, 73.1, subtract 20.9. I'm going to get 52.2. And then... I divide by N. Oh, hey, maybe I don't mind whoever wrote this test question. I don't have to use molar mass. They just did it for me. So maybe that guy's not half bad. 0 0.0345 moles. Okay, what's going to cancel here? I'll go to blue. Kilograms cancel. Degrees cancel, gonna get kilojoules per mole. That's good because they want me to go into kilojoules per mole. Okay, so I do my math and I'm gonna end up with 633.965 kilojoules per mole. Oh, now I gotta go into the scientific notation. So Here's my decimal. I gotta move my decimal over there, which makes this 6.3, the nine will round that up, 6.34 times 10 to the second, because I moved it over two. So my answer is going to be 6342, 6342. I guess I should check if we're getting the right answers, hey? Give you the wrong answers all the way through. One was B, two was B, six, three, four, two. Six, three, four, two. Yep. Okay. Sheesh. Uh, and then I look at my watch because I'm writing my diploma exam as a student sitting in grade 12. I just want to get out of high school and I think, oh my gosh, I just got started. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Okay, so question three. So once again, I just, I just start reading the question. A calorimeter that would undergo the smaller change in temperature is a calorimeter made of 
Okay, aluminum or tin, because its specific heat capacity is larger or smaller. Okay. Um, hmm. I guess there's two ways we can look at this. We can do a logic, or we can do a calculation. Um, I'll do the calculation first. Um, okay, so Q equals MC delta T. And this question is asking us, like, you know, which, um, which is going to have the smaller change in temperature? If we want to find out exactly the temperature change, we just solve for delta T here. So that means I'm going to divide by MC. Divide by MC, right? So I'll have my delta T. Okay. So let's do that. Delta T equals Q over MC equals, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make up a number for Q. I'll just erase this because it doesn't really matter. Uh, it didn't tell us a Q, uh, Q. So I'm just gonna make up a number: 100 joules uh, times by the mass. Did they give me a mass? They did. 55. 0 0.0 grams and then times by uh, the specific heat capacity so we got to know the specific heat capacity let me just page three in the data book they give us some specific heat capacities uh, right there so there's aluminum and what's the other one tin all right so 0 0.897 0 0.227 okay so go back write that down 0 0.897 and this is 0. Point, what did I say 227 joules per gram degree Celsius okay so um, 0 0.897 joules per gram degree Celsius okay so joules cancel joules cancel grams grams I'm left with degree Celsius I get my calculator out, I do that, and this raises, okay, and that raises 2.03 .03 degrees Celsius, and that's for aluminum. Okay, let's do the other one, so same formula, that formula, and I'm going to use the same heat value because it said same quantity of energy. They didn't tell me a number, but I can just make that number up because it's, as long as it's the same on both sides, it doesn't matter. Uh, times by the mass is the same. And then we're going to go 0 0.227 joules per gram degree Celsius. I plug that number in and I get a temperature change of 8.01 degrees Celsius for tin solid. Okay, so let's go answer the question now. So, the calorimeter that would undergo the smaller change in temperature, smaller change right there, would be aluminum because its specific heat capacity is higher than this one. So my answer is A. Okay, um, I don't know if you care to hear the logic version of this, but let me try to explain it. Um, <laughs> let's say I've got a chunk of aluminum. It's aluminum. And a chunk of tin. Okay. And aluminum... Uh, Aluminum's number is 0.897, it's specific heat capacity, and this one's 0.227. Okay, so think of it this way. Every time some heat flows into the tin, and let's just say that that arrow is worth 0 0.2, 0.227. Okay, I'll just say 0.2 just to make it simple. Come on. That's 0.2. Okay, each arrow I'm going to draw is 0 0.2. 0 
0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. But each time, each arrow, oh, each 0.227 raises the temperature one degree Celsius. So the tin has already gone up four degrees Celsius because each time you put in 0 0.227, that's joules per gram, right? Joules per gram degrees Celsius. Every time that heat goes in, we raise one more degree Celsius. But if we did the same thing with aluminum, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, we haven't even hit the threshold yet. Maybe it's gone up one degree Celsius, right? So if we look at it that way, the calorimeter that would undergo the smaller change in temperature, I'll just put in one here, let's say this one up one, if we're lucky, is aluminum because it has a higher specific heat capacity. Its capacity is higher, it holds more heat. Anyway, so the answer is, oops, the answer is A. Whew, that's a long question. All right, moving on. Uh, the molar enthalpy of reaction for carbon dioxide in the fermentation reaction is, all right, the, this is the fermentation reaction. Okay, this is easy one. I like questions like this. Molar, they want kilojoules per mole, right, for carbon dioxide. Okay. So I just go find CO2. Two CO2s gives us 58.4. So what do I have to do? I just have to divide this by two because I want one, kilo, or one mole of carbon dioxide. So 58.4 divided by two is going to give me 28.2. Answer's got to be D. I like questions like that. Oh, look at this one. It's my favorite question of all. Well, I say... It's actually boring. But which of the following is the original source of energy stored in glucose? Okay, well, it's photosynthesis, right? But the answer is on this question is always the sun. Yes, it happens in a cell. Yes, it happens because of photosynthesis. Yes, um, chemical energy from the sun gets stored in the molecule. Yes, but the original source, it all comes from the sun. Perfect. Two quick questions, yes. All right, let's keep going. Oh, oh, this is one of those, okay. The standard molar enthalpy of formation for hexane is, okay. So I always tell you guys, um, if they ever ask you for formation, there's only two ways to do it. Way number one, just look in the data book. If it's in the data book, that's the answer. Number two, if it's not, you're going to have to do Hess's Law. Okay? Uh, we could go look in the data book quick. Uh, what is this? C6H14 hexane. Uh, I'm just going to go look quick. I'm curious. I, um, there's the H's. Oh, hexane. Okay. Because these are formations, if hexane was listed here, let, let's say they were asking about ammonia, there's my answer. Write it down, done. But this isn't in the data book, so I got to do Hess's Law. Okay, they've already done Hess's Law for us, right? There's the answer to Hess's Law. So now uh, this, this one here is unknown because it's not in the data book. So, okay, so I do Hess's Law. So Hess's law equals sum of the heat of formation of the products. I'm shortening this just to be quick. Products, oops. Products minus reactants. <laughs> okay, Mr. Gibbings can't spell. All right, so I'm just going to move this up here. Okay, so away we go. Let's solve it. So I'm going to start here. 12 times negative 393.5. I should write down units, but I've done so many of these, I'm not going to do it right now. 
14 water vapor in the data book is negative 241.8. Uh, if, okay, I'll go look. Uh, I'll show you. If In case there, you don't know where I'm at. I just went and found carbon dioxide and water. There's my water vapor right there, 241.8. Okay, I did the same thing for carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon dioxide number is right there. Okay, uh, so I've done these two. Oops, those two are done. Okay, now I'm going over to here. That's not in the data book. So that's X, and I have two of them. So that's 2X, and now oxygen has a heat of formation of zero. Okay, all right. So now, um, oh, I forgot the most important part here. Back that up. I also know the number, dang it, over. I also know this number. And of course, it's right here. That's the answer. Negative 770.9.8 kilojoules. All right, so now I just start doing math. So if I write this again, I got negative 7709.8 kilojoules equals, if I just do this math right here, if I do the math in that bracket, I get negative 8107.2, 8107.2, okay, minus 2x. All right, so I guess I didn't need my brackets there. I'm going to get rid of those brackets. Don't need that. I don't need that. Okay, and so now I want to get x by itself. I want to I want to get x onto the other side. So I'm going to add two x. I'm going to add two x to this side, and then I'll change this to blue. I'm going to add this number to get x by itself to this side. Plus this. So now I should have 2x equals negative 8107 plus 7709 comes to negative 397.4. And then I'm going to divide this by 2, divide this by 2. So x will equal negative 198.7 kilojoules per mole. And then I can put, oops, you know, I'm realizing I should have put units in just so you guys can track them all, but um, they're all kilojoules per mole, so um, that's just it. Okay, that's it for that one. You're writing your diploma, and you're done up through question six. Lots to go. Okay, what's this? Um, when the delta H is negative 2602, the coefficients for the above equation are. Okay. Now I, look, I go look in the box here, and I see the molar enthalpy of ethyne. Okay, we're talking about ethyne, which is this, is negative 1301. Okay, so I can see that when I have one mole of ethane, it's 1301. So this is asking me when I have two moles of ethane because I can see that this is double, right? So that's telling me two moles, not one. So I'm just going to go balance this with two moles. I'm going to have to put two there. Uh, so that makes four, CO2, four Cs. So four Cs go there. And then... How many H's do I got? I got four H's. Two times two is four, so I'm going to put two H's there. And then if I look at my O's, I got two times four is eight, plus two more here is ten. So that's a five. Two, five, four, two. So C2 is two. That's a five. CO2 is a 
four, and that's a two. Two, five, four, two. What do we got going on here? <clears throat> okay. Which of the following potential energy diagrams, and I'm reading this, illustrates the reaction of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide? Yeah, okay, what do they got going on here? So I got NaOH here. Oh, look at what they gave me. Molar enthalpies of formation. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Hess's law for this reaction. That reaction right there. HCl plus NaOH makes NaCl plus water. And I'll just have to plug in these numbers instead of what's in the data book because these are uh, solutions and they just gave me the number. Okay, so whatever. So delta H equals my products minus reactants. Products, okay, so NaCl, they gave me that number, which is negative 407.3, so products, negative 407.3 plus Water liquid, they didn't give me that one. I have to, must have to use the data book number, which is negative 285.8. There's just one of them, okay. Minus reactants, HCl is negative 167.1 plus uh, NaOH, which is negative, that's confusing, 407 and 470. <laughs> negative 470.3. All right, okay, let's do the bracket, or the math in the brackets. So this bracket comes out to negative 693.1 minus the math in this bracket, which comes out to negative 637.4 that equals negative 55.7. All right, and I got a negative there, so that means exothermic. All right. So, which of the following potential energy diagrams illustrates the reaction of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide? Okay, well, First thing, it's got to be a graph that goes down, right? Because it's exothermic, so that's out. And that one's out, so it's got to be B or D. And <laughs> so B says um, the delta H, the delta H is less than zero the delta H is greater than zero. In other words, the delta H here is negative, the delta H here is positive. So, because it's negative, this is out, it's gotta be B. Okay, all right, moving on. Number eight, a correct statement about the reaction represented by the enthalpy change diagram above is that the reaction is exo or endo. Okay, well, I can see right now that I start here, I end here, um, the graph is going up, right? So it's going to have to be um, C or D because the graph goes up. Um, and let's just read them now. Endothermic and would require the reaction enthalpy to start it. Endothermic and would require the reaction enthalpy to start it endothermic and would require more than the reaction enthalpy to start it. Okay, so the reaction enthalpy, so, okay, uh, let me just erase this. When they say, and the require the reaction enthalpy, what does that mean? The reaction enthalpy is this, right? That number, let's say that number was uh, plus 100. Okay, they're saying the difference from here to here is 100. They're saying um, 
if we put in 100 kilojoules, this reaction would start. Okay? And this one says would require more than 100 in kilojoules to start it. And that's the, that's the true statement. Because if I just put in 100, if I just get to here, the reaction won't start. We have to go all the way up to here, and then this reaction will happen. Okay? So remember we talked about this activation energy. This reaction won't get activated until we get to here, and then it goes. Okay? All right, so 8 is D. All right. What's this one? So I'm kind of doing this in like, I uh, can't say it's real time, but I'm, I'm not like, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm just reading this as I go. I didn't like, well, I probably did this test last year or something. I've probably done the test a, a bunch of times, but I haven't looked at this test for like a year. So anyway, I'm just kind of doing this. So sometimes I might get tricked by a question. I'll have to go figure it out just like you guys. So, Okay. Let's see what we got here. For the forward reaction, which of the following rows describes the reaction type and the enthalpy of reaction in the equation represented above? Okay, reaction type. So, okay, I was just looking. This is this is for question nine. I wondered if this this question was for both, but it's not. Or that diagram was for both, but it's not. So. Okay, for the forward reaction, which of the following rows describes? So here's my reaction. A plus B makes C plus D. And the forward reaction's activation energy is 70. The reverse reaction, the activation energy is 80. Okay, what do I, let's see here. So I'm going to just draw a graph straight okay uh, let's just make this zero here so the forward reaction activation energy is 70 so I'm gonna put a 70 there oh I see okay and if I was doing the reverse reaction uh, says the reverse reaction is 80. So if I'm going backwards, if I'm going this way, um, to get to the top there, I have to put in 80, which means this is minus 10. That's not very nice. Minus 10. OK. So now we should be able to answer the question. For the forward reaction, which of the following rows describes the reaction type? and the enthalpy of reaction. So the reaction is definitely exothermic because, oh, dang it. <laughs> because I start here and I end up lower. So that's exo, right? So out, out. And the enthalpy change is going to be 10. Yeah, because I'm, I'm starting at 0 and then I'm ending up down here, which is at 10. So the enthalpy change will be negative 10. So my answer here can't be positive 10. It's going down. It's got to be negative. My answer is A. Number 9. Answer is A. Perfect. Okay. Moving on. Hey, we're cruising. Using the numbers above, match the statements above with the descriptions below. There is more than one correct answer. Oh, interesting. Okay, so examples that model activation energy in a chemical reaction are numbered. Examples of alternate pathways. Okay, so this is both activation and this is catalysts, right? So I'm just, without even looking up yet, I haven't even looked at this. Oops. I haven't looked at this yet. I'm not going to look at it. I'm just thinking to myself, here's what we're at. Here's where, in my head, I'm just thinking, okay, here's what they're asking about. Versus 
right? And so this is my activation energy and the same, the dotted line is like my catalyzed, catalyzed reaction. Okay, so this one, enzymes speed up digestion without being consumed. Okay, because we're speeding up, that is like the catalyst. The catalyst is giving an alternate pathway here. It's speeding up the reaction. Okay, so I'm going to say that that is, we're going to put that one here. Um, a burning match is placed in a pile of wood to start the fire. Okay, so that's just like, I think I gave you guys in class the example of if I want to start paper on fire, there's energy in the paper, but I got to do this. I got to add energy and then it'll start going, but I got to add energy first. So I'm going to say that's here. A catalyst is used. Well, that automatically makes me think of the blue one down there. So that's going to go there. Electricity from the battery is used to ignite the fuel in a car. So in a car, you turn your key. Electricity creates the spark. And then the spark... Um, the, the spark ignites the gas. Okay, so they didn't say anything about speeding up or anything, so I would have to say by default, of course, we're there. So, and then how do you write this on your test? Okay, yeah, that goes in the first box, that goes in the second box, so two, four, one, three. Just go look if that's the right answer. So they gave us a whole bunch of right answers. They said 2413 is right. Oh, yeah, and then you could do this 2431 because you could flip those, right? They could go either place. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so they'll, they'll make it so that <coughs> you can't go wrong if you happen to put number two and four right there and there. Okay, so there you go. Good. Let's keep going. What are we on? Multiple choice, 10. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like these ones. When listed in order from weakest to strongest, the reducing agents are... Okay, so I automatically right now think, oh, they're trying to trick me because usually these questions say oxidizing agents, but they didn't. This is reducing agents. So then I quickly ask myself, okay, metal ions are usually OAs, Metal elements are usually RAs. And they told me these are metals. Okay. All right, so we're looking at the reducing agents. So I'm going to just look for check marks. Okay, so one, two, three. That's my strongest reducing agent on a chart. Reducing agents are down this way. Anyway, I'm going to do it this way. So, oh man, I'm already done. Can you see how, oh wait, from weakest to strongest. Okay, never mind, I'm not done. Okay, so my strongest one goes here. Let's make that look nicer. Okay, so ZR is here. I'm just gonna make a little chart here. Next one is IN. Remember on a chart, reducing agents, the strongest ones, the strongest reducing agent is down here, right? Versus oxidizing agents, the strongest one is up here. Uh, and then I got PD, and then I got IR. Okay, so because they want me to go weak, weakest to strongest, they want me to go this way. So this one's the weakest, this one's the strongest. So I R P D uh, yeah, so it's A. Ten is A. Let me go double check. Number ten, multiple choice ten A. Okay. Let's do eleven. Oh yeah, and look at this is referring to questions ten and eleven. Okay, so huh, this is annoying. 
I haven't even read it yet, but I'm looking at it, and I'm like, this is like four sentences long. <laughs> if these metals and their ions were placed in a table of standard electrode potentials, so like one of these, the half reaction with the highest positive electric potential would contain the strongest blank. Okay, so... Okay, so I've kind of got the table done, but how do I make this not messy? Um, here, let's do this. Look at this table. The strongest oxidizing agent is there. Strongest reducing agent is there. Strongest oxidizing, strongest reducing agent. That's my positive. Here's my zero cell. And everything below here is negative, with the most negative one being that one. Okay, so same thing. I could just make these numbers up. I could say plus 2, plus 1, minus 1, minus 2. I'm just making them up. But Okay, let's go back. Um, the half... The half reaction with the highest positive electrode potential would contain the strongest oxidizing agent. Okay, so like this one. Like this would be my strongest, right? And when compared to the hydrogen half cell, oh yeah, so let's say the hydrogen half cell is right in the middle here. This half reaction would be located. Oh, I might have to. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. This reaction would have to be higher, right? Would have to be higher. So that is B. Number 11 is B. Okay, hopefully, you guys could follow that one. I got a little messy. Number 12. Okay, let's see. During this reaction, the bacteria cause the nitrogen and NO3 negative to undergo oxidation or reduction. And as a result, the oxidation number of nitrogen will decrease or increase. Okay. Well, let's see. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm filming this in my room right now. I think it's like fourth period and I don't have a class, so I'm filming this. And there's a movie going on in the background. Um, okay, looks like I'm going to have to assign oxidation numbers here. Okay, so here, I'm going to zoom in. O is minus 2 for my oxidation number. There's three of them. Mathematically, I'm at a negative six. It's got to equal negative one, so this is a plus five. Elements are zero. Okay, and the oxidation number is going in nitrogen is going from a five to a zero. Remember my analogy, if you shoot a rocket up into the sky, you lose it, so if the number goes up, we have lost five electrons but the number oh maybe I didn't need to go that far oh yeah I did because it's oxidation so so the first one is oxidation oh wait the number's not going up <laughs> see on a test you can get confused <laughs> Mr. Gibbs Okay, the number is clearly going down for anybody that can, like, observe. Okay, <laughs> I'm not even going to edit that out because that's funny. Okay, you guys should see that's what happens on a test. you got to be careful. Okay, the number is going down. If the number goes down, Elon Musk invented rockets that could land. He used to shoot a rocket up into the sky and it was gone. Now he can just bring it back down. If the number goes down, we've gained electrons, which of course is reduction. Um, so that's out. 
and the oxidation number of nitrogen will um, the oxidation number itself is going from a 5 to a 0. The number itself is decreasing. So that is C. Boy, that's annoying, that test over or that movie that's going on in the background. I want to go watch it. I don't want to do this. Okay, and i got to do this for both questions. Okay, what's next? So that's C. Check my answer. <laughs> Make it a little louder in there. Okay, so which of the following rows identifies the coefficients NO3, H, and E when the nitrogen half reaction equation is balanced in acidic conditions? Holy moly. Okay, I actually like these questions. These are fun. This is another, I would have said in class, this is devising half reactions. We've got this reaction up here, which is incomplete. We're now going to complete it. We're going to devise in. Okay, so let's do this again. So NO3 negative goes to N2. This is minus 2. This is plus 5. This is 0. I know we've already done that. but Okay, I'm going from a 5 to a 0. So if the number goes down, I gained 5 electrons per atom. Here's the key, per atom. How many atoms do I have? I've got two. So I gotta make this a two. Now I've really gained 10 electrons. Okay, so I gotta put my 10 electrons there. And now I go three times, three times two is six O's. So six H two O's go here. Two times six is 12 H's. 12 H's. Okay, so my NO3 negative is a 2, so these are gone, so it can't be A or B, and my H positive is a 12, so it can't be this one, it's got to be D. Go check my key, multiple choice 13 is D. Nice. Okay, I'm going to do two more here, and then the bell's probably going to ring. I'm going to go home. You guys won't be able to do that. I have to sit and do your test. Okay, multiple choice 14. What's going on here? An equation numbered above that would not represent a redox reaction is... Oh, okay. And the equation classified as disproportionation is... Okay. So remember, disproportionation is when one substance acts as both OA and RA. It looks like it both loses and gains electrons. And the one that's not redox is the one that doesn't have a change in oxidation number. Because redox reactions have to have a change. So I'll give you a little hint. When I look at this quickly, I see... Uh, Element that means that's zero, and over here it's going to have to be an ion, right? Like that'll be a plus one, minus one. So as soon as I see elements on one side, and then that same thing is not an element, it's now a compound, that's going to have to be redox. So this one has to be redox. This one has to be redox. This one looks like it's going to have to be redox. So the one that's not redox is equation three. So um, these are out. And the uh, class, which one is disproportionation? So now I'm gonna have to go figure out which ones are, um, I have to assign oxidation numbers to these. Um, I'm going to just take a hunch that it's going to be the fourth one here, but let's we'll just do it quick. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at this, this one. I got two KOHs plus Cl2 makes KCl, KClO, and H2O. Oh, my. 
don't know if I had to write out that whole thing or not. So I'll start with this one. This is a zero plus one minus one CLO minus two. K is in group one, that's plus one. So this has to be plus one. And then H2O minus two plus one. Minus two plus one plus one. Okay. So let's see. Chlorine is going from a zero to a negative one. The number's going down. Chlorine is also going from a zero to a positive one. So it's going up. Chlorine is going both down and up. Therefore, it has to be equation four only, I think. I'm going to have to go back and look, though, right? Like, I'm going to have to go back and do these other ones to figure out between these two. Okay, so let's go see. This is zero. Oh, yeah, it can't be these because this is K is going from zero to plus one, and there's no more over here, so that's it. So it can't be that one. So it can't be this one. Okay, so that if it can't be this one, then this is out. Uh, either equation five or four. Okay, yeah, so that's out. And I don't even have to do the th second one because it's not asking. So it's got to be D. Um, now just for fun, I'm just going to, let's just see here. This is zero plus one minus two plus one plus one minus two plus one zero so the k is going zero to negative or zero to plus one and there's no other k's the h's didn't change at all and the o is going from a minus two to a minus two so no change there and a minus two to a zero so it's not doing both so the only answer here is D. Okay, that was a little bit of work. Don't like those slow ones. Okay. Oh, a titration. Lovely. Um, oh, it's going to be a lot of work here, isn't it? Do we got time before the bell rings? Okay, so here we go. In the titration experiment, the barrette is filled with, okay, that's the easy part, and the end point is reached when a single drop changes color of the sample from, okay, so first part, the substance being titrated is in the flask, right? Here's my barrette. Here's my flask. The substance being titrated, so it says, Oxalate is titrated. This is oxalate. So that's got to be here. O, O, C, C, O, O, 2 negative. So, um, oh, and then when I look down here, I see it says sodium oxalate. Yeah, the sodium is attached to it, but it's a spectator. But it's we're, we only care about the oxalate. So, so I know oxalate is here, which means... MnO4 negative is in the barrette. So that's my barrette. That's my flask. So in a titration, the barrette is filled with, so the barrette is filled with potassium permanganate. So A and B are gone. And <clears throat> the end point is reached when a single drop changes the color of the sample from, okay, so here you got to know that this is purple and this is colorless. So the sample, by the way, this, this beaker, the beaker is called the sample. Okay. The sample is going to start colorless and as these, here, let me make purple drops. <laughs> as purple drops come in, Right? It's going to make this turn purple eventually. Okay? So it's going to go from colorless to pink or purple, but it'll be light, so it'll be pink. Oh, no, it is colorless to pink, yeah. How do I know that, by the way? How do you know? 
So this is out. So the answer is C. If you remember in class, permanganate, wait, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, permanganate is, is purple. Like it's a deep purple. But when there's so little of it in there, it, it comes out looking pinkish. Okay, it doesn't look deep purple like when you start. This actually looks deep purple. Uh, when you pour this liquid in here, the permanganate, it looks deep purple. But when it gets to this point, it looks pinkish. Do I have a pink color here? Let's see, I got pink. Yeah, I got pink there. It'll turn pink. Anyway, if you also wanted to, let's say you forgot that, because, you know, when we do the labs in class, you've seen it turn to pink. But look at, we don't have to look at this chart hardly ever, so it's like we almost never look at it. But look at, uh, this is page 11. Permanganate is deep purple when it's concentrated and pink, purple pink, when it's kind of diluted or weaker. Okay, so here's colors. Oh. Bell, I gotta go home, you guys. The colors of aqueous ions. So, anyway, there you go. Okay, I had 15 is C. I'll do this one when I get home. Let me go take a break. Yeah, because that's big old titration, calculation, stoic, and everything else. Okay, I'll come back to NR4 in a bit. Bye-bye. Okay, NR4. <clears throat> so it says, <laughs> The concentration of sodium oxalate in the original sample expressed in scientific notation. Okay, so... What I like about this is they gave me the balanced equation, right? So there it is. And I only care about the reactants in this case. So I'm going to just balance my, I'm just going to write it down here so I can, I got more room. So I got two MnO4 negatives plus five OOCCOO2 negatives plus 16 H positives, and I won't even need the rest. Okay, so the question's asking about sodium oxalate. So that will be my required, which would make this my given. And I know that concentration is what they want, so I've gotta know what the volume is, and I'll have a concentration and a volume for this. Uh, the concentration they have told me is right here, and that's of permanganate, so 0 0.0200 moles per liter. And the volume, <coughs> what do they give me here for volume? Um, let's see, this is 10 mils, they told me. 10 mils of oxalate. Okay, so this is 10. Okay, and if you look here, they told me they told me my reading here is 26.2 cuz this is 26.1 Point two, right? And this is th uh, three point six. So remember, barrettes read down, right? Like the liquid is up here, and then it slowly falls, and so it ended here. Okay. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> so I go twenty six point two minus three point six. And I'm going to get 22.6 mils. All right. <clears throat> and then I can do stoic. Remember, stoic always goes given to required. So I start with given, and then I go over to required. So 22.6 mils of MnO4 negative times by... So I've done this one, volume, we're going to go to concentration now. 
0 0.0200 moles over liters. And I've done a thousand of these, so I'm not going to do any cancellation yet because I know what's happening next. Now I do stoic. So I'm at given. I've used both my givens. And now I've got to convert to required. That's what stoic is. So in my balanced equation, I have five. Like I got to go required over given, right? So required is here. 500CCOO2 negatives over my 2MNO4s, which is given. And now, notice what I've done. I've just changed my substance here to OOCCOO2 negative, which is required. Okay. And now, times by my last one, so only thing I have left is volume here. I have to go one over 10 to get mils on the bottom. And then I can cancel mils, and then I got my answer. So you do the math on that and you get 0 0.113 moles per liter. Now they want this in scientific notation so I'm going to have to move my decimal over here. So I get 1.13 times 10 to the negative 1. And then I put my answers in A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D. So 1, 1, 3, 1. Okay, here we go. Number 16. Let's go back to red. Which of the following equations represents the reduction half reaction? Okay, that occurs in Petri dish four. Ooh. So when I read that, um, I'm like, oh boy, I gotta do more reading here. So, let's go do some reading. So like I'm right now I'm looking here, but that doesn't really help me understand anything yet. So unfortunately, now I gotta go read everything. So for roxyl indicator can be used to test for corrosion of iron. Okay, so iron rusting. Okay, that's one thing I'm seeing there. Ferroxyl indicator, and you might never have heard of ferroxyl indicator. Who cares? You just keep going. Contains potassium ferrous cyanide, which turns blue. That's probably important to indicate the presence of iron. Okay, blue makes iron too, means iron too. And phenolphthalein, which turns pink in the presence of hydroxide. You guys have dealt with that before. Student set up an experiment in which iron nails were placed in petri dishes with water-based gel and allowed to sit overnight. Ferroxyl indicator was added to each petri dish, and the following table was compiled. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna. So it seems like what's important here is um, this indicator turns blue with iron, and phenolphthalein turns pink with hydroxide. Okay. All right, okay, I think I know what to do here now. So, um, because this is the rust reaction, I'm gonna go to my chart, I'll clean this up. Okay, remember that here's the rust reaction. There's my SOA and then iron. So oxygen and water react spontaneously with iron. Okay, so that, that's rust. Okay, so let's go back. And here's what I know. I know oxygen plus water reacts with iron. Oops. With iron, okay. So when you have on this one, 
an iron nail plus water plus oxygen, I know that the iron is going to rust. And so on the other side, I made iron too. So I know I'm going to make iron too here. And when there's iron too, it will turn blue in the presence of that indicator. Okay. An iron nail wrapped in with zinc wire plus H2O. Okay. So now this is like sacrificial anode. Here's zinc. So if the iron nail is wrapped in zinc, the zinc becomes the SRA and this gets bypassed, right? So there won't be iron in there. The zinc will get oxidized and turn into zinc 2. This will have zinc 2 in it, which doesn't really help us with anything. So there won't be a color change. It won't be blue or pink there. So I'll just go like that. Iron nail wrapped with copper. Okay, so go look. if it was wrapped with copper, so I'm going to clean this up. Okay, here's the situation right now. I got iron, which is this, and this reaction will happen. If this nail was wrapped with copper, nobody would care <laughs> because that's not the SRA. This is still the SRA. This is like, who cares? Okay, because it doesn't react because it's not the SRA. This would still make zinc 2. And I would... It's not going to react with copper. It'll just react with iron. So I would get a blue here. And an iron nail wrapped with chromium. Okay. Or CR. Okay. Chromium would be a stronger reducing agent. So this gets bypassed. Chromium will make chromium too. Okay. Now why do they care about hydroxide here? Anyway, we'll see. I forgot to look at hydroxide, so we'll see. So this is going to make chromium 2, and that's not going to do anything. Okay, so let's go back to the question now. Sheesh. Um, I'll read this again. Which of the following represents the reduction half reaction that occurs in Petri dish 4? Oh, maybe I didn't need to do all that. Well, we'll see. I'll probably need it for something else. Nope. Oh yeah, question 16 and question 5. Okay. Uh, uh, so here's the reaction they're talking about right now, right? This, oops. Come on. This reacts with this. And here's what I do all the time. Strongest oxidizing agent is reduced. Strongest reducing agent is oxidized. So oxygen and water are getting reduced while chromium, oops, chromium is getting oxidized. The reduction half reaction, so that one like this, right? With chromium, strong, strongest oxidizing agent is reduced. So 16 is D. Okay, hopefully I didn't do all that other work for nothing. Okay, match the Petri dishes above with a color after ferroxyl indicator. There is more than one correct answer. Now here's where I wasn't even paying attention to hydroxide, so I guess we'll see. Yeah, because these two turn blue. One and three turn blue. Oh, pink only. So let me think here. If I'm going to go one and three. Now, without even looking at anything else, this must be two and four. But I forgot to look at hydroxide. So let's go find one of them. Let's look at the zinc. So zinc. Oh, that's why. Okay. There. Get rid of all of this. Okay. 
when this does react with something like zinc, you know, the zinc makes zinc too, but it also makes hydroxide right there. Okay, so if hydroxide is present, um, there's going to be hydroxide in this one as well. And the same thing will happen in this one. The chromium will react. Actually, looks like there's going to be pink in all of them. No, uh, two and four. Pink only. Yeah, because there's no blue in there, yeah. And then in the other one, blue and pink. My cat is meowing at me and wants out. Blue and pink. Yeah, all of them are going to react with something. So hydroxide is going to be in this one too and this one. So that's why in one and three, you're going to get blue and pink. Because let's even just look at when there's iron. Yeah, if there was just iron in there, it's still going to react with something. Yeah, all of them will make hydroxide. Okay. Okay. And so my answer is let's see, two, four, one, three. Okay. Move on to the next one here after I let my cat out. Well, Brett, you want it. Okay. In our six, when the half reactions shown above are used to produce an overall net reaction equation with the lowest whole number coefficients. Okay, so this is just a balancing question, it looks like. They gave me the cathode, they gave me the anode, and uh, that looks like I don't think that aluminum reaction's in the data book with. So I've got, yeah, I've only got aluminum down here. Okay. See, I got aluminum here. All right. Do I gotta do any flipping here? Cause it looks like, looks like they already flipped this for me. Cause see how the electrons are all on this side. And then when we like, let's say this is the SOA, right? And then let's say this one is the SRA. When I go to balance, I write this one forwards as is, but I flip this one. It looks like they've already flipped it because they've got their electrons over on this side. So let me go back and show you, right? I got electrons here and I got electrons here. So I think they've already flipped this for me. So I'll just do this now. Okay, so that means all I got to do is just balance electrons. So I got two electrons here, six here. So I'm going to times this by three. So that's going to give me um, and then what's yeah, and then electrons cancel, of course, electrons cancel because I got six and six. And I've got six H positives, and I can see that I got three times two, six H positives are gonna cancel. And H2, so yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have two AL, that's this one, plus three H2O produces H2, three H2s. And Al2O3. All right, the coefficient for water is three. Coefficient for hydrogen is three. The total number moles of electrons is, so that's this number, right? Six moles of electrons, that's what the, that's what the six is. So the answer is three, 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 six. Standard cell potential for the cell represented above is, oh, I gotta do the voltage here. Now, how am I gonna do that? 
Oh, okay. I was looking up at question six. Like, wait. Okay, so I'm just looking here. All right, so I go look at my chart. This is aluminum and tin. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make this easy without having to write a bunch of stuff down. So aluminum, tin. <clears throat> aluminum and tin. Okay, so here is aluminum. Where is it? Aluminum is here. Oops. Okay. Aluminum, aluminum, tin two. Where are you? Tin two. Tin two. And so you guys know there's a tin four on here as well, right? So there's okay. Because I got I got a tin two here and here. So the reaction for tin two and aluminum. This would be my SOA. This would be my SRA. This is irrelevant. So I just come up here and go, okay, I've got a negative 0 0.14 because I got to write this one, I write down forwards, right? This one, I have to write backwards and I flip it. And so this is a positive 1.66. Subtract the negative 0 0.14. And of course, I get my answer of 1.52. The answer is 1.52. Now, if that was confusing, I'll write it out quick. If you are good, just fast forward if you need to see this. So I had 10 to, I just copy this one right out of the book, right? 10 to. Plus 2 goes to 10. That was negative 0 0.14. Now the aluminum I had to flip. So I'm going to write it backwards from what I see in the book. Plus 3 electrons. And I had to flip it. So positive 1.66. Add them together. Got 1.52. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Ah, uh, cell questions. Okay. In the cell above, the reducing agent, it's going to be loses or gains electrons, and the oxidation number of the oxidizing agent increases or decreases. All right. Okay, so I just look at this and I got to go find all these on the chart. So I got copper, copper 2, nickel, nickel 2. All right, so let's go find them on the chart. Actually, I don't even have to go look at the chart. I know that. Cu2 and Cu are like this on the chart. And then nickel, I think that's going to be below. I better go. So here's my copper 2 and nickel 2. So Cu2 is going to react with nickel. This is strongest oxidizing agent. This is strongest reducing agent. Oxidizing agents are reduced. Reducing agents are oxidized. Okay. So copper 2 reacting with nickel. All right. So copper 2 is reacting with nickel. OA. RA. So that one is reacting with that one. Okay. So... The reducing agent gets oxidized. Okay, so in the cell, the reducing agent gets oxidized, so loses electrons. All right. Um, and the oxidation number of the oxidizing agent, okay. Um, so this, the oxidizing agent is going to go from a plus 2 over to 0, right? Because copper will be 0, it's an element. So plus 2, if the number goes down, we gained electrons. And so, oh, it's just asking about the oxidation number. It will be decreasing, plus 2 down to 0. Answer is C. Okay, we're good. This must be for both. Yeah, 17 or 
Oh, 17, 18, and 19. Different page. That's annoying. Diploma exam writer should do that. Oh, I guess it's a booklet, so you could see everything. Okay. I will forget then. Okay, 18. What do they want here? Um, during the operation of this cell, the nickel electrode acts as the... Uh, so nickel, reduces, so loss of electrons, oxidation, anode. So that's going to act as the anode. And the color of the nickel solution will become... Ah, okay. Okay. So nickel is being oxidized. So that here's what's happening, right? Nickel solid is turning into nickel 2 plus 2 electrons, right? Like I just take this and I got to flip it. So nickel solid is becoming nickel 2. So more nickel ions are starting to appear in the beaker. Right, so um, this is starting to corrode, right? It's getting eaten away, and nickel appears, and then another nickel two appears, and then another. So um, nickel is going to make this get darker, more nickel. Okay? A. All right. Okay, let's keep going. I don't like, uh, I'm on an iPad, and so this is going to be hard for me to bounce around here. Oh, well. Okay. During the operation of this cell, the species being reduced is, and the mass of the electro, copper electrode. Okay. So, um, copper 2. Uh, boy, I got a mess going on here. How am I going to do this so it's nice and here? I'll just put it on here. You know, copper two is reacting with nickel. Okay, so this is strongest oxidizing agent is reduced. The species being reduced is copper two. So these are out. And the mass of the copper electrode, okay, so copper 2 is grabbing two electrons and turning into Cu solid. So the mass of that electrode is, oops, is going to increase, right? It's, it's just, it's like this. Well, well, this is decreasing, this is building up. Because copper twos are being attracted over here and turning into copper solid. They're plating copper on there. All right, so 19 is C. Good. Question eight. Uh, oh, one of these. Okay. The time in seconds required to plate 0.10 grams of copper onto steel using that current. Okay, so remember these. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of things I need to know, right? I need to know 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs over moles of electrons. I need to know my half reaction right here. There's two electrons for every one copper. And I need to know what this means. 15.0 amps is really 15.0 coulombs per second. Okay. Uh, they want time in seconds. Okay, so I'm going to start with seconds on the top. Now this is going to get a little tricky because it's going to be numerator, denominator, but whatever. Seconds over 15.0 coulombs. 
Okay, away we go. Let's cancel coulombs. 9.65 times 10 to the 4th coulombs over moles of electrons. Coulombs are gone. Let's cancel electrons. Um, two electrons for every one copper. Okay, electrons are gone. Let's cancel moles. This is copper, so molar mass of copper, 63.55 grams. Okay, moles are gone. Uh, they've given me my copper. So 0 0.106 grams of Cu solid. Grams are gone. Copper is gone. And it looks like that should do it. Oops. So I hit equals there. And I'm going to get 20. Whoops. Uh, 21.5 seconds. Okay, so my answer should be 21.5. I'll go check that. 21.5. Perfect. Question 20. How many questions are on this test? I'm only halfway through. This is ridiculous. Okay. What's the oxidizing agent? All right. So... Okay, when I look at these reactions, I see... Electrons are on the same side. So that makes me realize that... Um, uh, that makes me realize that <clears throat> these are just half reactions like as if they were in the data book. So one of them is my SOA, one of them is my SRA, and I'm going to have to flip it. Okay, so that's what I see there. And the other thing I'm looking at is right here. These are not in the right order because you know that on the chart, on the chart, the highest positive voltage is up here and they start going down. I look at my voltage, that's 0.06, that's 0.03. So this reaction needs to go up above. And so I'm going to just write it that way just because I'm doing a test and I don't want to mess this up. So here's how it really looks. I've got COQ plus 2H positives plus 2 electrons goes to COQH2. Okay. And this is voltage of... 0 0.060 volts. Okay, and so now I know that my SOA is here, making this my SRA. So the oxidizing agent in the overall reaction is this one, which means that 20 has to be A. Okay, and so I got to do this for all three questions. Okay, the voltage generated by the overall reaction is, okay, so this, this one, this one I write forwards, and so the, react, the voltage is what it is. It's 0 0.060, but the bottom one I have to flip. That's positive. This one is... Um, the positive, it becomes negative 0 0.031 volts. And I subtract those, and I get a positive 0 0.29. Okay, or 0 0.029, sorry. Okay, and so my answer is B. Right, and 22, which of the following species could reduce COQ? Oh, brother, okay. Okay, so that means, so strongest oxidizing agent is reduced, right? So this, 
can only be reduced by something that's below it on the chart. Okay. And so I got to go look at my chart. So where is this going to be? This is going to be at 0 0.060 volts. So I'm going to go just put that on our chart. 0 0.060 volts. Zero point, yeah, right there. So our COQ, whatever that was, is right there. Okay, so it's in that there. Okay, so now I just got to go find these on the chart. Check this out, you guys. Watch the power of this. Copy. Paste. <laughs> Okay, so AG solid is here. AG solid, where are you? Right there. Okay, this can't react with that. That's non spontaneous, so it's not going to be that one. Fe2 positive, oh, it's right there. So that's not going to work. PB solid. That looks plausible. There's PB solid. That is below. It's probably got to be that one. And copper solid is there. All right. So it is PB solid. So the answer is C. Wow. Cruising along. Okay, 22 is C. Perfect. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, the acid that would cause the bromine solution to rapidly become colorless is the blank acid because this acid is classified as saturated. Okay, okay. Bromine. All right, so remember bromine is Br2 or Br connected to Br. And bromine tests for... You can do the bromine test for the presence of double bonds. Okay, so look at that. Double bond. Bromine will react with that because it's a double bond. And um, now does it tell us the color of these things? Yeah. It doesn't tell us the color, but... Because it reacts, and it won't react with this one because there's no double bond. It, oh, by the way, it's double bonds between carbons, not a double bond to an O here. It's just a double bond between carbons. Okay, so it's got to be um, fumaric acid, and it's because that acid is classified as unsaturated, right? Saturated is when you have between carbons. Here's saturated. Saturated is this bond here when you have carbon to carbon single bonds. That is saturated. When you're when you got double bonds like that, that's considered unsaturated but it's between carbons. It doesn't matter if it's an O to a C with a double bond. It's between C's, okay? So 23 is D. Um, okay, next question. Which of the following groups of compounds contains only organic compounds? Okay, so this is that question about the organic exception or the inorganic exceptions. What are the exceptions? So remember we got um, oxides like carbon monoxide, carbi carbides, cyanides, okay, and carbonates. Okay, so what do I got here? So CH2O 
H O O C C O O H C T H Y. So I, you know, if I can draw these, I got C H to an O. That looks like something we've seen. Um, we got, you know, C's, H's, and O's. There's nothing unrealistic about that. This is um, C's, H's, and O's again. C2, H, B, R. So it's halogenated. So A is okay. Um, so I'd say that's going to have to be our answer. Let's look. Oh, there's carbide. So that won't work. Um, cyanide, so that won't work. That's out. And oxide, yeah, so those are out. Okay, so it's got to be A. All right, good. Moving on. 25. Okay, what do we got going on here? Uh, which of the following rows identifies the total number of carbon carbon covalent bonds? Single butane molecule. No. Okay, that's weird. Okay. Here's butane. So it's got a whole bunch of bonds, right? It's got four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's thirteen bonds, thirteen dashes there, but it only wants the number of carbon carbon. So one, two, Three. There's three of those, so that's out. And um, because it's butane, there are no um, double bonds. So it's not that it's unsaturated. So the answer has got to be B. Okay, nice. I like those. Quick, easy. Let's get on to summer holidays. Okay, the properties above that apply to butane are numbered. Okay, butane, all right. Okay, so butane is um, nonpolar. Here, I'm gonna erase that. Remember, if I have a nice symmetrical pull, like, I got a pull this way and a pull this way, everything. So it's nonpolar, okay? So two is okay. It's straight chain, it's not branched. Um, here, I'll get rid of those arrows. Oh, dang it. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, lower boiling point than ethane. All right, so remember when you have what's called a homologous series, the more carbons, the higher the boiling point. So this has four versus that. So it's got to be a higher boiling point. And it undergoes a substitution and an addition reaction, undergoes combustion and substitution. It can't undergo addition because addition is when you have Right, here's an addition reaction. It'll go, that'll go there. But we don't have a double bond in butane, so it can't be this. So it has to be that. You can substitute, and you can burn it, but you can't do an addition. So it's going to be two, three, six, eight. Keep going. In a fractional distillation tower. Oh, I'm breaking my rule here. The statement above is completed by melting points, boiling points, greater or less. Okay. In a fractional distillation tower, hydrocarbons are separated based on physical property of boiling points. Just had to memorize that. Uh, compared to the number of carbon atoms in the molecules collected at the bottom of the tower. So remember, the, the longest ones are at the bottom. 
The number of carbon atoms in the molecules collected at the top of the tower is uh, less. Because uh, like tar is a great big long molecule. That's at the bottom. And then methane's at the top. So the number of carbon atoms is less. That's got to be D. Okay. Good. 27. Uh, the organic compounds that are isomeres of nonane. Oh, man. Of course, they made a big... They couldn't just use, like, butane <laughs> nice and short. Oh. <sighs> Sometimes you just got to do what you don't want to do. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh my gosh. Did I even need to draw that? <laughs> C9H20. Okay. Okay. Trimethylcyclohexane. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is number one. It's cyclohexane. It's trimethyl, so CH3, we'll just, oh, it's one, two, and four, CH3. Now, remember, each point on the carbon, each point is a carbon, and so there has to be two coming off of each one. Oh, man, okay. So, let's <laughs> This is so annoying, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's C9. H is three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I got C9, H18. So I'm gonna say that's out. And if that's the case, dun, 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 I think the answer has to be C. I could go prove it. I don't really want to, but I guess I should. Okay, tetramethylpentane. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Pentane. Tetramethyl. So two, two. Four, four, Oof, I'm not very good at this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, dang it. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, skip, sixteen, skip, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, skip, twenty. Yep. <laughs> okay, so yes. And two and three. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna just just cause I don't know if you guys care, but I just gotta do it. Three ethyl. Okay, one, two, three. Hello, Ethel. How are you doing? Two dimethyl. Okay, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine C's. Okay, let's just start. Where should we start? We'll start right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. But you could see, I could actually figure that out a lot quicker on the diploma, right? I could, away we go. All right, because I, just of the process elimination, it couldn't be any of the ones that had the one in it. So, okay. That's a lot of words. What do I want here? Okay, 
the correct statements about changes in boiling point when the alkanes above are compared to their derivatives. Okay, comparing the alkanes to their derivatives. Okay. So, <coughs> as a test taker, I'm kind of annoyed by this because now... I gotta go look at that and that and all of this. Okay, well, I think my brain's telling me I'm gonna go up here first. A different functional. So, boiling points for organic compounds with different bonds and functional groups. Okay. So, I can see ethane compared to ethene and ethine, which makes sense. We talked about anes, enes, and ines, and they're, they're kind of random. You have to just memorize it, or they've given it in this case, so we don't have to memorize. This makes sense that it has a high boiling point because it's got the um, uh, hydrogen bond. And this isn't a hydrogen bond, but it's not symmetrical. It's got that chlorine end on it, so a whole bunch of electrons on that end, very polar. Okay, so that all makes sense. And then we got the same thing here. Alcohol, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so away we go. Statement, the correct statements about changes in boiling point when alkenes, okay. Double bonds increase the boiling point. Is that true? Let's go look. Here, I'm going to just clean this mess up. Double bonds increase the boiling point. Uh, ethane goes to ethene. Looks like it does not do that. It goes down, so that's out. Triple bonds increase the boiling point. Not minus 88 with a single bond, minus 84. So yeah, that looks true. Double bonds decrease the boiling point. Remember, we're comparing everything to the alkane. So double bonds decrease the boiling point. Let's see. Here's my single bond. Here's my double bond, right? Yeah, double bonds do decrease the boiling point. Okay. Triple bonds decrease the boiling point. No, we just looked at that. Hydroxyl functional groups increase the boiling point. Well, they better because that's hydrogen bond. <laughs> that's these. So, yeah. Chloro functional groups, yeah, they do increase the boiling point compared to the alkane, yes. Hydroxyls decrease, no. Chloros decrease, no. So two, three, five, six. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Took a lot of my time. Two, three, five, six. Never get those five minutes back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, vitamin E can be classified as and contains the functional group, blah, blah. All right, vitamin E. Wow, look at that. Vitamin E can be classified as, well, as soon as we've got this, it's got to be an aromatic and contains the functional group. Okay, let me erase that. So it's got to be an aromatic, and it contains the functional group. So then I start looking for functional groups. Uh, you know, here I just see methyl branch, methyl branch. I do see an O here, but it's not like a double bond to an O, single bond to an OH. It's not like an ester branch. There's that funny way to write a methyl branch. And look at that. I do have an alcohol there. So, they were probably trying to trick me right here. Was that an ester? But the answer is no, it's not. Because an ester is... An ester is a double bond to an O, single bond to an O, with carbon chain, carbon chain, right? 
So, no. All right. Okay, 29. Oh. In the reaction represented by the equation above, the type of reaction pentan 3 o is undergoing is an... Okay. Elimination or esterification and sulfuric acid speeds it up or slows it down. Okay. So I've got this pentan 3 -O. Oh yeah. So if I was to draw this another way, like here's my pentane molecule, right? my OH here and then it's turning into this right so what happened was this H and this OH came off and we made a double bond so that is an elimination reaction and sulfuric acid is just acting as a catalyst and catalysts um, speed up reactions and catalysts are written above the arrow and all that so that's a okay let's keep going number three i think we might be three quarters of the way done they're getting close Okay, an ester represented by the line diagram above was formed by the reactants. Okay, so an ester is when you have, remember you have to have um, a carboxylic acid. Plus an alcohol. And that makes an ester and water. All right, so I'm just looking for, oh, they want me to talk about this particular one, the ester represented by the light that was formed by, okay. So what made this? So they've written this one, let's see, double bond to O, single, remember when I, remember when you do this, um, uh, back here, Remember, an ester is a carbon double bonded to O, single bonded to O. This is the branch. The branch is connected to the O with the single bond. So I look for the O with the single bond, so that makes this one branch. And this one parent. So my parent is one, two, three, four, five carbons long so I've got a pentane which would have been the carboxylic acid and then my alcohol is one two three so I'm looking for a propanol I'll just write that down before I forget propanol with a pent pentanoic acid all right so uh, pentanoic acid, when I look, I see one, two, three, four, five, but that's not an ester. One, two, three, four, five, double bond to O, single bond to OH. Looks like it's going to be B. And then one, two, three, with an alcohol, that's B. Propanol, oops. Like when you tap an Apple Pencil, it just switches like this. I'm just tapping it with my index finger. But I'm a tapper, and I don't want to be a tapper, but I just tap, and then it switches. <laughs> you don't care. Okay. Okay. Propanol, pentanoic acid. Done. 
in our 11. Match the equations for the formation of greenhouse gases above with the reaction types below. Okay. Oh, see, I tapped. I didn't even try that. I just, when I'm thinking, I'm just tapping and tap that. Okay. Um, the hydrocarbon combustion reaction is numbered. Okay, hydrocarbon combustion is this one. So this is the hydrocarbon. This is combustion. Substitution reaction. Oh, did we do one up here? That's elimination. Substitution is, you guys know what that is. That's the easy one. Uh, substitution is when, where is it? Well, this is kind of funny. Hey, look at this. We got this. And these are both being added to that. Anyway, that's my addition. So that's going to have to be number four. Um, the or inorganic reaction is numbered. Yeah, which one's inorganic? Because it's not even in this unit. Yeah, we got ammonium here. That was never in the organic unit. So that's number two. And then substitution is going to have to be number one. Let's see. Okay, it's kind of a funny looking one, but we could draw it. So I got CH4 plus Cl and Cl. And there's two of those. That's a little odd. And F and F. Okay. And then over on the other side, I made C with CL, CL, F, F, and then an H, CL, and then an H, F. Yeah, so there was some substituting going on this way. That, and that jumped on there. So there's my substitution. Anyway, three, one, two, four. Okay, so... Like I never, I didn't show an example like that in class, but you can figure it out, right? With what you know, you can figure that out. Okay, the polymerization reaction above can be classified as the polymerization reaction above can be classified as condensation or addition. Okay, product is. <coughs> All right. Uh, it will be so when I see this, I'm looking for an ester. Condensation is like esterification, a double bond to a single bond to an O. So I see an ester there. So I'm going to say it's going to be A or B. And in an esterification reaction, remember what comes off is like a condensation reaction is water, right? So esterification, condensation, so it's going to be B because they make water. All right, um, let's keep going. Which of the following represents the balanced equation? Oh, I got to underline. Balanced equation for the equilibrium law expression given above. Oh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So it's 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 products over reactants. Remember these are products over reactants. So I'm going to look for CR3 positive or sorry for CR2072 negative as a product. So nope, nope. Okay. And then I need to see Br negative and 8H positive. So Br negative, yes, yes, yes. Br negative, yes, yes, yes. Okay, and then reactants. I need to see BrO3 there and there. Cr3 positive there 
in there. What is the difference between A and B? Oh, in four waters. Uh, we only include water in the equilibrium expression. You only include liquids if there's um, two or more liquids, right? So I only see aqueouses, so I can't include water. So there's my equation, and then when I go and I write this, I ignore the water. So that has to be the answer. 32 is C. Okay, 33. If the equilibrium system represented by the equation above was heated, okay, that's probably important, the value of the equilibrium constant would and the concentration of that would. Okay, so if it's heated, that goes up. We shift away, up, up, goes back down that goes back down all right so uh, it was heated the value of the equilibrium constant would so if we go products over reactants um, and it's shifting to products my numerator is going up and my denominator is going down and that <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter because it's it's got to be increase. So it's going to be one of those two. It just won't. It's it's going to change. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, temperature is the one that causes change. That's right, okay. And the concentration of C6, H5, CH2, CH3, that one would go down. So my answer has to be C. Okay, the value of the equilibrium constant is, okay, so Kc equals products over reactants. Okay, so, yikes, look what I have to do on this. I have to write my expression and then plug my numbers in. Okay, so Kc equals, actually, let's do it this way. This will be easier. Okay, the, this one is 0 0.330. This one is 0 0.540. H2 is 1.20. I'm just going to look. No coefficients. So they're all ones. So it's products over reactants, right? So these are first. So I'm going to have 0 0.540 times 1.20 divided by 0 0.330. And I do the math on that. And I get 1.96. 1.96. I'm going to go check my answer. 1.96. Good. 34. This looks like Le Chatelier, increase in pressure. Increase in pressure on the syngas equilibrium system because of a slow decrease in system wood. System volume, okay. Increase pressure by decreasing volume. So think of, hold a syringe, an imaginary syringe in your hand, and now start pushing it down. The volume's getting smaller and the pressure's getting bigger, like if you capped it, right? Okay, so if I increase the pressure, it favors the side with the fewest number of moles. Here I have one and one, so that's two. One and three, that's four. If you increase pressure, it favors the side with the fewest moles. It's going to go this way, up, 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 down, down. Shift the equilibrium to the left and increase. Okay, so here I'll 
go through this systematically. A, shift the equilibrium to the left, true, and increase the number of moles of methane. That's true. That looks like my answer. Don't you love it when it's A? But then you still got to go look because you just have to, right? Shift the equilibrium to the right, no. Not shift, no. Increase both the forward and the reverse reaction rates. Increase both. It goes both forwards and backwards. Not change, no. Now, yeah. You, you would think that that's okay, but it can't, it can't, you can't have both. You can't have your cake and eat it too, right? Uh, this part's okay. <clears throat> 35. Okay, 35. Looks like an ice question to me just by looking at it because I got oops, that there. So the equilibrium concentration of H2 and the equilibrium concentration of H2S. Okay, so give me a ton of room here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this right here. So I got CS2 plus 4H2s make CH4 and 2H2S. Okay. Equilibrium. And my initial concentration of this is 2, 4. This is weird because these are usually zeros, right? But... They are this, and then the equilibrium concentration of CS2 is 1.25. All right, and they want me to figure out this one and this one. Okay, so if this was 2 and it's now 1.25, it changed by 0 0.75. And then remember... I can only do required over given in the change step here. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Okay, and so I'm gonna do a little side calculation here. I want to, I'll keep that blue, I want to find the hydrogen because they, they want me to find this answer and this one, right? So I do this little side calculation and I say that's the one I want right here is what I'm trying to find right now. And this is my given. So I go and I go 0 0.75 CS2s times by required over given. 4H2 over CS2 cancel, cancel. So 0.75 times 4 gives me an answer of 3. Well, that's equals 3 moles per liter. Okay, so this is 3. And 4 minus 3 gives me 1. And then I'm just going to do the same thing all over again. And now I'm going to make this my required. So 2H2Ss. So I go back to my given, which is the 0 0.75, 0.75 times by required over given. So um, the required is 2H2Ss divided by CS2. The CS2s cancel. Oh, I forgot to write it. Anyway, we, we know it's there. Okay, so 0 0.75 times 2 gives me 1.50 which goes here, four minus, uh, oh no, I add on this side. I remember on this side I, I subtract, on this side I subtract, but on this side I add, right? So this is 5.50. That's probably the real trick of this question. Anyway, so my answer is one, and 5.50, so the answer is D. All right, let's keep going. We're okay.
Okay, let's see here. The change in the concentration of N2O4 was and the initial concentration of N2O4. Okay, so another ice table. Um, okay, this one looks a little weird though. Okay, so I'm just gonna write this down here because it, uh, it's easier to do this. So N2O4 goes to 2NO2. Shell change equilibrium. And it says 0 0.430 moles of NO2. Okay, so that's a little weird because usually this side is the zero, right? So, and then they told me <coughs> this N204, which is at equilibrium because it's leveled off, like these have leveled off, right? That's 0 0.491. And this is 0 0.0475. So that's what I know. 475. Okay. Well, that's a little weird. Um, yeah, here's the other. Yeah, I can see what they're going to do here. This is, this is dirty. Oops. Yeah. Okay, this is weird because look what's happening. N204. Oops. N2O4 is going up. So this side is going to be the adding side. Usually it's the subtract side. Okay. And the other side is going down. So this is my subtract side. Anyway, that's weird, but whatever. <clears throat> okay, so let's find the difference here. This was 0.43, it's now this. What did it change by? So 0.430 subtract equals 0 0.03852. Put this in blue. 3852, okay. And then, um, remember, I do required over given in the change step. So I'm going to take my 0 0.3852 of NO2s times by required over given. This is required because I'm trying to find this number. Whoops. Because I'm trying to find that number. So times by required over given. So N2O4 4 over 2NO2s, cancel, cancel. So 0 0.3852 divided by 2 is point zero point <clears throat> zero point one nine one two five. Okay. And now I just have to find that number. So plus. Uh, so I'm gonna go point one nine one two five subtract the point four nine one equals point two two nine seven five. So zero point Two nine nine seven five. Okay. Point two nine nine. I'm just doing some quick calculating here. Yeah. Okay, so like I said, the N two O four side is the addition side this time, so this number plus this number gives me that. And on this side, this number minus this number gives me that. Yeah, okay. All right, so that's correct. How in the world did I, I must have just switched these two numbers in my head. That's funny. Okay, anyway, I'll just quickly 
this was 0 0.3825. I typed it in my calculator correctly. <laughs> <coughs> but anyway, okay, so there you go. And now to finish the question, okay. Okay, the change in the concentration of N2O4 was 0.191, so that is A or B. And the initial concentration of N2O4 was um, 0.299, so the 0.3. Answer is A, 36A. Okay, that took a long time. Hopefully these next ones are shorter. Match the numbers above with their correct position in the equilibrium law expression for the bitartrate system. Bitartrate. More than one correct answer. Okay, so equilibrium law expression question. All right, possible terms. Okay. Oh, okay. It's like, where? <laughs> There's my expression. <coughs> so let's do, uh, let's do W. W is going to be, this looks like an acid here, so KA, so that's going to be 1. And then X is. Um, products over reactants, so it's going to be one of these. That's going to be either H3O positive, this one, or C4. It could be either one of those. That's why there's more than one correct answer, because it depends on what order you started looking. Anyway, this is going to be a 5. I'll say 5. Um, y would be the other one, so 6. Uh, oh, wait. That one would be C4. Oh, yeah, right here. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because this one, I had this one wrong. I was just looking quick. I was looking at that. I was looking at that one, thinking it was that one. Anyway. Okay, so this is 3. And the last one is this, which is 6, 1, 5, 3, 6. <coughs> okay, good. Which of the following stresses would increase the amount of products? Okay, so I like, Chatelier is like, it's hard. When you know what you're doing, it's almost hard to get them wrong. If you added HCO, what are we looking for? Um, so we're looking for what's going to shift to products. So we need it to shift that way. So if I added HCl, it's going to shift the other way. So that's wrong. Okay. Um, if I add a catalyst, that'll speed up a reaction. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one and just see increasing the pressure. Oh, a catalyst has no effect on the equilibrium. That's right. Okay, so that's out. Increase the pressure. If you increase the pressure, it favors the side with the fewest moles. In this case, there's one, 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 one. So that won't do anything. So that's out. If you increase C4H5O6, that goes up, shifts that way. That's got to be the answer. 37 is D. Perfect. 38. Which of the following rows identifies bronsted lowry bases and their conjugate acid base pair? Okay. Okay, good. <clears throat> so bases. 
So this is the acid, this is the base because they're getting my proton over here, which makes this the conjugate acid and this the conjugate base because that proton's jumping over there. Yep, okay, so my acids are HNO2 and H3O positive. Um, oh, sorry, wait, oh, it asked for bases, okay. Bases are water and NO2 negative. Okay, so this is out. And, uh, and the conjugate pair is, <clears throat> oh yeah, so a pair just differs by one proton, so that's out, so it's got to be C. Uh, like you remember that, eh, the... <clears throat> here. Here's what a pair is. A pair differs by one proton. Here's a pair. Oops, I kind of swerved around there. And then this is a pair. <coughs> okay, the value for Kb for the conjugate base of nitrous acid. So Kb of nitrous acid. Okay. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, I haven't done this for three months. Ka times Kb equals Kw. There you go. We're trying to find Kb. So we're going to go to Kw divided by Ka. This is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 5.6 times 10 to the negative 4 equals 1.78 times 10 to the negative 11. And I gotta go like this, A, B, C, D. So one, eight, because it's gonna round, one, 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 eight, one, one. One, 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 eight, one, one. Okay, good. Oh, we're moving, okay, oh, this looks annoying. Okay, what do they want? Match the species numbered above with the descriptions given below. You may use a number more than once. <coughs> okay, the species that is amphiprotic. Amphiprotic means it can be on both sides of the chart. Hmm. So if it's on both sides of the chart, here's what that means. It can give an H, it can take an H. So this one could give an H, but it can't take. This one's already two negative. I'm assuming it can grab two H's, but can't give, but there are two H's there. I'd say it's number two. Um, let's see. The species that is the conjugate base of C4H305. So that means um, that means this would be the acid. So the conjugate base means this has thrown away a proton. So it would be C4H2O5 to negative, right? So that would be this one. So that would be three. The species that is the conjugate acid <laughs> <coughs> of this, so that means this is a base, so base is grab protons, so this becomes C4H4O5, C4H4O5, so that would be number one. The species with the weakest conjugate base is numbered. Okay. Uh, so the strongest acid would have the weakest conjugate base. Okay, and it's saying here that Ka increases, so this is my strongest acid, so I'd say it's one again, two, three, one, one. That looks right. <clears throat> 39. This is for both questions, yeah. Which of the following rows correctly identifies the species that is in a Bronsted-Lowry neutralization, that N-A, 
would most readily donate a proton and the species that would most readily accept a proton. So which one's the acid, which one's the base? In a neutralization reaction. Okay, so this is my strongest acid according to this because the Ka is increasing. So I'd say it's going to be species 1. And the species that would most readily accept a proton has to be the opposite end. So this is my strongest. This is a base. And so I'd say it has to be that one. So I'd say B. That is correct. <clears throat> Are we almost done? Holy cow. In this benzoic acid solution, the, okay, the benzoic acid concentration is equal to the benzoate ion concentration. Um, so benzoic acid, uh, that's on our chart. Uh, where is it? Right there. So here's what I know about it. It's a weak acid, okay? If it's a weak acid, that means it favors reactants heavily. Lots, well, well water's lots. A little bit, a little bit, okay? The benzoic, benzoic acid concentration is equal to the benzoate. So this and this are equal. I would say no. False. The benzoic acid is greater than benzoate. Definitely true. <clears throat> hydronium ion is equal. So hydronium is equal to this. No. Hydronium is greater. Hydronium is greater than that. No. So I'd say B. 40 is B. <clears throat> What's the pH of benzoic acid? Ah. You guys know how to do this one. <coughs> if it's a weak acid, you must use ice. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm going to do my ice table, but let's, I'm going to just do it here, right? And I'm just going to follow that pattern. Okay, so I know that this was a, this was 0 0.070. Okay, so this goes 0 0.070, cross out water, and then these are 0 and 0. I don't know any other number, so I let X equal the change. So this is X, which means that's X. It's all one to one. And this is 0 0.070 minus X. Oops. And then we can always ignore minus X in this class. <coughs> so then, I go look at benzoic acid, 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. So I have 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5 equals products. X squared over reactants, 0 0.070. So 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5 times 0 0.070 equals x square root. I do that and I get 0 0.0021 which goes right here which is the concentration of H3O positive at equilibrium. And then I go pH equals negative log 0 0.0021.
Let me do that. Negative log. Two point six seven seven. So two point six eight. Two point six eight. Final answer. Done. Whew. Okay. Forty one is part of this too. Okay. I don't want to erase anything yet. <coughs> Compared to carbonic acid, H two CO three. Benzoic acid is A compared to the hydrogen carbonate ion. Oh, brother. Okay. So I'm comparing carbonic acid. You know what? <laughs> Let's do this. So I got to have my. I am going to copy this. Copy. Paste. What did it say? The H2CO3, where is that? Okay, so I'm looking for carbonic acid. Where are you? H2CO3, H2CO3, right there. I gotta draw a box around this, it's hard to see. Okay. Compared to carbonic acid, H2CO3, benzoic acid, which is right here, is a stronger acid, okay. And the hydrogen carbonate ion, <laughs> okay, right here, but be careful because hydrogen carbonate is in a couple of places. There it is there as well. The hydrogen carbonate ion, benzoate ion is um, and compared to the hydrogen, so compared to this one, the benzoate ion is, this is weaker this way, weaker, is a weaker base. So I would say 41 is A. Sheesh, that was a lot of fiddling around. Forty-one is A. Oh my gosh, look, we're almost there. Three more. Okay, if the pH of a solution changes from 2 to 5, then the hydronium ion concentration will change by a factor of 1,000. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So, and the pOH of the solution, oh yeah, remember this? You got to do this, so you make sure you get this right. Oh. Maybe I don't know. Oh my gosh. H, 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 O, H, O, H, O, H, and oh, how do I want to do this? pH is zero, seven, fourteen. OH is 14, 7, 0. Okay. I don't know if I needed all that, but let's see. And the pOH of the solution will change from... Okay, so we're doing this. We're going from, like, say, 2 to 5. So we'll say we went from this part over to here. Um... The pOH is changing from 14, like, yes, from 12 to 9. So my answer has got to be... The pOH, oh wait, do I got that right? Yeah, from... 
Oh, <laughs> I crossed out the right one. <laughs> okay, it's going from 12 to 9. 42 is deep. <coughs> A buffer solution could be made by mixing equal amounts of citric acid containing, all right, and a small amount of strong ace. The buffer. Okay, awesome. These are easy. Here's what a buffer is. You guys remember this. A buffer is a weak acid with its negative ion. Okay. So I take a weak acid, um, I'm going to say, given my choices here, because I don't, these aren't going to be on our chart, sure doesn't look like, I don't think I've seen those, C3H5O, yeah, that is on our chart, that's it right there, okay, so that one, <coughs> So that is definitely a weak acid. <clears throat> the other one, where's the other one? Oh yeah, right there. So that's a base. Okay. And I was also gonna just guess here too, because this has three negative here, it's already given up three protons. I yeah, rarely see more than that. So I would say these are my acids to begin with. That, that's just a base anyway. <clears throat> anyway, so it's between C or D. And when a small amount of strong acid or base is added to a buffer, it resists a change in pH. This buffer would not do that, but the equilibrium would shift to resist that change. Let me read it. When a small amount of strong acid or base is added, this buffer would re... Oh, <laughs> there's the word. Resist a pH change. You just have to read, Stephen. Okay. And the final question of the day. If they make me do the stoic here, I'm going to die. Okay. On the titration curve above, the hydronium ion concentration is less than the hydroxide ion concentration at the region labeled. Okay. In the determination endpoints, thymol blue would be an appropriate indicator to identify. Okay. Oh. Okay, let me think here. So we're starting with acid in here. And we're dumping in base. Okay. And at the beginning, let's see. The hydronium is less than hydroxide. Less. Okay, so before we even start the titration this is all acid in here right so at the very beginning like it's acid 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 so it's not going to be base until we get it up into this area and so i'm going to say between two and four it's got to be four okay because two is still below seven anyway right all right and the region labeled in the termination of endpoints, thymol blue would be an appropriate indicator. Okay, so I just got to go look at thymol blue. And thymol blue is good from 1, 2 to 2, 8, and 8, 0 to 9, 6. 1, 2 to 2, 8. Okay. So 1, 2 to 2, 8 is useless because that's that's right here 1.2 to 2 point there's three there so 2.8 is going to be in there we haven't even gotten to the vertical yet so that's useless so 8.0 to 9.6 is this range here 
which is on a vertical. So that would be for one end point, I would say. 44C, let me check my answer. C, hey, we are done. Okay, after you're done your diploma, <laughs> have a great summer. <laughs> I'm so tired. Okay, bye-bye.